Good evening. So you might have noticed that we're in the midst of a presidential campaign. And so we thought it would be fun for about half of you to go back to the good old days of 2008 and the Obama-McCain campaign. Back then, campaign events looked like this. They mostly consisted of a candidate and a lot of people with signs. But something amazing happened shortly after this election. It was a major cultural shift in our society. It was something that changed all of our lives immeasurably. And you can see it just four years later in the Obama-Romney campaign. Many fewer signs and a whole lot of phones. These phones have changed our lives. And these phones have allowed us to do amazing things, things we never thought were possible. Or even necessary. You know, uh, <laughs> but we have really yet to harness the most amazing feature of these phones, and that is the power to heal. We're talking about the power to heal the poor, the weakest, most vulnerable members of our population. We're talking about people who live and work in places like this, and this, and this. Our work focuses on treating obesity. Indeed, the obesity epidemic is one of the greatest plagues of our time. Most of you know that obesity leads to hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and even heart disease. And in fact, many of our patients have all of these. Yeah, but did you know that if a woman is obese before she becomes pregnant, then her child is more likely to develop obesity earlier in life, is more likely to have hypertension by the time they start kindergarten, has a higher rate of autism and other developmental delays, and is even more likely to die earlier in life. You know, it's for these reasons that if we can help a woman to control her weight during her childbearing years, then we have the potential of not only improving her health, but the health of her children and perhaps even her grandchildren. But we have two interrelated problems. People in low-income groups have the highest rate of obesity and the least access to obesity treatment. But here's the exciting thing. These individuals in low-income groups have a major advantage. They use their phones a lot. That's right, the days of the old digital divide are far behind us. In fact, today we have new divides. Compared to us, people in vulnerable communities are more likely to do all of the things that you see listed here. And this gives us an unparalleled ability to turn their phones into treatment tools. At this point, you might be thinking about your own Fitbit or your Apple Watch, maybe your fitness app, or your diet tracking app. So how many people here have on a wearable device tonight? I do, too. How about you, Gary? Yeah, no. Um, and uh, the, the, I'm, apologies in advance, but now I'm going to tell you why the science says that these just don't work for weight loss. So many of the devices and the apps that we have right now do a great job at collecting data. But they do a poor job at changing our behavior. To help you change your behavior, you need a comprehensive program, not just a watch or an app. And it needs to contain specific personalized strategies, teach you new skills, and give you expert support from someone like a psychologist, a dietitian, or even a computer system. And yes, you need to track, but you need to do so consistently, five to seven days per week for the six or more months that it takes to lose weight. And here's the really critical part. To achieve the best results, you need to do all these things at the same time, tracking your behavior, learning new skills, and gaining support. Now, this would be difficult for any of us, but for people in vulnerable communities, the challenges are even more pressing. Imagine for just a moment that your life was like Sandra's. Sandra is 35 years old. She has two kids and two jobs. She aspires to be a nurse, but she knows that's not in the cards for her right now, so she's working hard, saving her money, and trying to be a good example for her kids. She has obesity, hypertension, and pre-diabetes. If you talk to Sandra, she'll tell you that sometimes she gets a little stressed out. But as a psychologist, I'll tell you that that's depression. You know, the challenge is that Sandra buys her food here, and she's a proud woman. She's so proud that she doesn't like to take her kids with her to go food shopping because she doesn't want them to see her use her food stamps. And the reason that she shops here is because she really doesn't have much availability of healthful foods in her neighborhood. In fact, right now I'm going to show you the number of full-service supermarkets in Sandra's community. That's right, they're not. 
And despite not having access to these types of healthful food options, she certainly has access to unhealthful ones. Sandra's also like most Americans, who would have difficulty telling you the number of calories they consumed if they eat this entire container of ice cream. It's 1,000 calories, by the way. So Sandra needs a program that'll give her specific dietary recommendations that takes into account the types of food that she actually has access to in her community. It needs to be easy for her to use, something with simple, concrete goals, as well as feedback that'll help her stay motivated when times get tough. We created a digital treatment that incorporates all of these things, and we call it IOTA. Now, IOTA is more than an app. It's a digital treatment, it's comprehensive, and here's how it works. Basically, someone just sits down at one of our computers and they fill out a short survey. We ask them questions about their likes and their dislikes, their attitudes, their behaviors. And then we give them a series of very simple goals. These are designed to look straightforward and easy, but behind the scenes, things are much more complicated. Our computer algorithms identify these goals specifically for people, and we know exactly how many calories they'll burn if they do these things. And then we're able to basically ask them to track, and they track each and every day. And Sandra used text messaging to track, but we've built other types of apps as well. Every time she texts us, we send her personalized feedback. And we're able to make that feedback even more personalized by using her weight data. We have scales in her home. We take these data and we can put them in front of a dashboard, in front of our coaches. These are people who provide support. And Sandra and people in our studies can call or text their coach and get advice. We even put these data into the electronic health record where primary care providers can use it for counseling. Our IOTA approach works. Over the past decade, we've shown that this simple, inexpensive tool helps people like Sandra lose weight. Now, we first met Sandra in one of our studies that we call Maintain, Don't Gain. And you know, the challenge for Sandra and women like her is that she gains a lot of weight each year, particularly during her childbearing years, somewhere between two to four pounds a year. So even if a woman enters her adulthood at relatively low levels of weight, by the time she reaches menopause, women like Sandra will have put on so much weight that health problems are all but inevitable. But Sandra joined our study, and after a year of using this program, she stopped gaining weight. But then things got interesting four years later. We came back to find out what happened. And in our control group, these are people who didn't use our program, people gained on average 11 pounds during those four years. But people who'd used that program, the IOTA program that I mentioned before, they just stopped gaining weight. And in that way, they reduced their risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and we think they might have been on the road towards improving the health of future generations. And remarkably, if you remember, Gary mentioned that many of the women that we encounter, like Sandra, were depressed when we first met them. For reasons that we don't completely understand, simply participating in this one program reduced women's risk of depression by nearly 70%. The Surgeon General took a look at our work and said we need to roll this out to Sandra and the millions of Sandras in our country who don't have other treatment options. And now we're beginning to take this approach global, and we're starting in China. Now, that may sound strange to you, because if you grew up the way I did, your mother said, clean your plate because they're starving children in China. Um, that's not really the case as much as it once was. And we have indeed taken IOTA to China, looks like this, and we've tested it there, and it works, and it works even better. We see larger weight changes, larger reductions in cardiovascular disease risk. Indeed, this IOTA approach we think has potential in many parts of the world where obesity is rampant, places like India, many countries in Latin America, South America, the Middle East. In fact, we don't really care what kind of phone you have. We don't need a fancy smartphone if you have an iPhone 7 or if you have your grandmother's flip phone or maybe it's your flip phone. It doesn't matter, we, we can use your phone. And in fact, we believe that these types of phones are critical for improving the health of low-income populations all over the world. And through our center, Duke Digital Health, we're now exploring ways of giving this technology away for free. Now, just one last thing. We were very excited about tonight's themes, uh, the Duke duets, because Shelley and I, uh, as President Broadhead mentioned, are true blue Dukies. Um, I met my double Dukey wife at Duke. I was a Duke graduate student. <laughs> we got married in the chapel. We moved back to North Carolina. We had our kids in the hospital. They were christened in the chapel. And Shelley, as Dick mentioned, was an undergraduate at Duke. She's now a graduate student at Duke, and she just finished camping out.
No. <laughs> you just wait, just wait. Not at Kayville this time, but at the chapel. Because Shelly and her Duke <laughs> alum fiance are getting married in the chapel next year. And <laughs> <laughs> that's the power of a Duke duet. Thank you very much. Thank you.